Hey, what's up, New Faith Church? It's your boy, comedian Marcus D. Wiley. I know what y'all are already saying. I feel in my spirit. Some of you are saying, why he get to come to the church and we can't come? Because we're in a pandemic. But I am here to help you kick off the summer shift 2020. And I'm so thankful to Pastor Dr. A. Jermaine Lewis for this opportunity. Now listen, y'all. I ain't been in church in a long time, and it feel good up in here. The AC on, y'all carpet clean. I mean, the pews have been for breezed. I mean, you're going to love this when you get back. Uh, however, I just miss this. Because at my church, my pastor be trying to emulate church, you know, try to pull me in from my house like I'm actually here when I'm not. You know, I know I'm not at church, okay? My church started at 9. I get up at 8.59. Praise God. I love that part about virtual church. You know, at my church, my pastor always talking about live holy hands. I'm like, bro, I'm in my drawers. I'm in the bed. Uh, I'm, anyway, I'm, I'm going too far. Anyway, let me tell you what I got prepared for you all tonight for the summer shift 2020. Right before the pandemic, on March 15th, I did a recording. It's my 15th recording, and it's called Bathtubs and Bibles. Bathtubs and Bibles. Getting ready to play it right now for you. Go get everybody in the family. Go get all your friends. Tell them to log on, because you're about to have a good time with bathtubs and bikes. Thank you so much for coming out. You know, I know we're in what they consider trying times. But we're going to be all right. Yeah, we're going to be all right. So tonight, I want to jump right into it. Um, we got a lot to share with you tonight. Yeah, I grew up in a time, I grew up in a time where folk took baths. Okay? Yeah, I grew up in a time, in a time where folk took baths. Some young folk in here, you don't even know what a bath is. Uh, You've been taking showers all your life. But uh, a bath is where there is a tub. And you fill the tub up with water. And everybody in the house that's a child got to get in that same water. All of them. Everybody. All y'all. Uh, don't you drain that water. Your cousin them coming over here, leave that in there. Oh, it was real nasty. But that's why I don't get sick, because my immune's strong. Uh, I've been bathing with people all my life, yeah. Yeah, strong, yeah, yeah. But back in the day, a bath represented relaxation. That's what it represented, relaxation. Some older folk would tell you, put a little Epsom salt in the water. Yeah, uh, Epsom salt, young folk, look like little crack rocks. Uh, <laughs> they say it's Epsom salt, we don't know. Uh, but it was about relaxation, a bath. They would even tell you, watch this, put some rubbing alcohol in the water, soothe your muscles. Because a bath was about relaxation. Now, where I grew up, we didn't have a uh, bubble bath. But we had joy. <laughs> we had Palmolive. We had Dawn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They even had a commercial back in the day that said, cow gone. That's because a bath represented relaxation. And I just believe if you're going to be a believer, you know, if you're going to be a Christian, if you're going to be a, a church goer, you need to learn how to relax. Why is it that the church folk always on edge? Huh? And we know all the scriptures. <laughs> Greater is he that's in me. <laughs> I can do all things through Christ. <laughs> they learn how to relax, man, relax. How this whole thing came about, y'all, I was at my barbershop. I love my barbershop, man. I'm at my barbershop. And at my shop, we talk about everything at my barbershop. Uh, we talk about sports. We talk about women. We talk about politics. 
We talk about girls. We talk about cars. We talk about women. <laughs> Females are a running theme at my barbershop. But this particular Thursday at the shop, the topic of church came up. And I've been going to this barbershop ever since I graduated from college. And I had no idea that none of the barbers at my barbershop go to church. None of them. So since we talk about everything, I said, man, let me find out why these boys ain't going to church. Now, y'all, I'm about to share with you some of the answers that they told me. Uh, don't get mad at me. <laughs> this is not my answers. I'm just reporting what the streets are saying. <laughs> yeah, don't get mad at me. This ain't even me talking. Uh, this is he that is within me. Yeah, that's... So I started with the barber on the far left, dude by the name of Eric. Everybody say E. e. I said, E, why you don't go to church? E say, Mark, I don't go to church because it's boring. Yeah, that's what Eric said. He said, I don't go to church because it's boring. Now, y'all, I've been going to church all my life. Church ain't never been boring. <laughs> never been boring. But it's been long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't act like it ain't been long now. My dad at church used to start at 10 o'clock. We still there at 2.30. That's too long. Do a check come with this? I mean, what's, what's going on? Huh? Church, don't act like church ain't been long. Man, my dad, when he would preach, he would always say, I'm on my way to my seat. 30 minutes later, I'm on my way to my seat. I'd be like, dog, did you forget where you were sitting? Do we need to bring the seat to you? Huh? And you know, pastors always trying to close. Why are we always trying to close? Go to the mall. What time they close? Nine, close. Huh? You go, you go somewhere, they, they about to close CVS. Are we trying to close? No, we close. Only in church are we trying to close. I used to be in the choir. I had to get out the choir. Yeah, because I never could understand why when I hear that song on the radio, it's three minutes. But then when y'all sang it at church, it's 23 minutes. Yeah, I got so mad. I went to the little, old, uh, the little leader, the little choir director. I said, say, cuz, man, why, why are we singing this song so long, bro? He said, man, the spirit. Spirit took over. I said, well, the spirit need to come to choir rehearsal. Because we ain't practiced that long. I mean, come on, man. So a lot of times, folk who don't go to church, they will equate long with boring. Next bar been there, dude, by the name of Jason. I said, Jay, why you don't go to church? Jay say, Mark, I don't go to church because it's routine. He said, they do the same thing every week. <laughs> he said, church, just like the young and the restless. I could not watch it for four months. And when I finally watch it, pick up right where I left off. Victor still with Nikki. Jack still trying to get your bow. I mean, same storyline. Yeah. He was just telling me about his church he went to. He said, man, I already know the praise ain't going to sing two songs. One fast. Y'all know, y'all know. Y'all know. I leave that barber, go to my barber, dude by name of Rob. I said, Rob, why you don't go to church? Rob say, Mark, I don't go to church because everybody in there fake. No, don't, mm, he talking about y'all. <laughs> that killed me when I say that. Like, mm, who he talking about? You! Church folk. But that's when I had to come in, I had to step up. I said, Rob, folk in church ain't fake. Everybody in there understand and realize that they need somebody greater. And they just sitting there trying to get their life together the best way they know how. Yeah, I took up for y'all. I mean, us, us, <laughs> us, took up for us. Leave my barber, go to the next barber, a dude by the name of Bo. I said, Bo, why you don't go to church? Bo said, Mark, I don't go to church. Because all they want, y'all go to my barbershop? 
Because that's exactly what he said. He said, all they want is your money. I said, man, Bo, where else in the world do you go where they don't want your money? I wouldn't even want to go somewhere where they don't want my money. Don't you know you get what you pay for? And I don't know why when money come up in church, people get all stiff, arms fold, lips twist, eyes roll. Man, stuff costs. Yeah, these lights on, cost. These instruments, cost. I, cost. I don't want y'all to ever get to mistake me on this. I go to church, they be like, I thought you did this for the Lord. I be like, eh, not really. I do this for mortgage. <laughs> I do this for car notes and stuff. Yeah, I got bills. Yes, two things that are faithful in my life. That's the Lord and bills. They keep coming. Yeah. But the last barber in there is a dude by the name of Anthony. We call him Ant. Now, nah, y'all, Ant, give you a little background on Ant. Ant is uh, in a love affair with the um, prison system. You know, they break up, get back together, <laughs> break up, get back, yeah. Ant got two strikes on him. Yeah, Ant got tattoos everywhere. I mean, places I wouldn't even believe a tattoo artist can put tattoos. I mean, how did he get that under your fingernails, uh, <laughs> under your tongue? I mean, he, he got a good artist. But anyway, I ask Ant, I say, and why you don't go to church? And Ann say, Mark, I don't go to church because I don't see where I fit. Now, this one got me. Because I'm trying to understand if Ant don't fit in church. <laughs> Which one of y'all do? <laughs> and I want to know why do the ants of the world believe they don't fit in here. Since I've been to church all my life, I know, man, even when I don't fit, I know how to fit in. But just because you fit in, don't mean you fit. Like for instance, I know how to usher. <laughs> but it's not my fit. <laughs> but if they need me, if they say, hey Mark, we need to usher, I know how to go. Okay, too. I know how to do it. So that thing stuck with me. That thing stuck with me, y'all. I ain't lying. It stuck with me. I was like, man, the brother said that he don't see where he fit. And I'm trying to understand who don't fit love and who don't fit joy, who don't fit peace, who don't fit restoration, who don't fit, you know, all this stuff. And so I prayed to the Lord. Now, I'm not a prayer warrior, but I hollers at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't, I ain't a prayer warrior, you know, but, but I holler at him every day. And, 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 and I asked God, I said, God, is there a church where everybody fit? I mean, is it one created, you know, without spot or wrinkle? <laughs> That's Bible. That's Bible. I asked, and believe it or not, man, the Lord answered me. Out the blue, one of my childhood friends called me and invited me to the Texans football game right? Invites me to the Texans football game. He said, man, I got a sweet ticket for you. Now, for those of you that don't know what a sweet ticket is, that's a ticket where you sit in a suite and it's all you can eat, all you can drink, and all you can drink. <laughs> Let him use you. I told him, I said, cuz, I am there. I said, I'll be there after church. He said, no. Come early. I said, all right, I'm, I'm going to go to first service, then I'm coming through. He said, no, get there early. I said, big dog, the game don't start till noon. Why am I coming there so early? He said, come early because we tailgate. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what real, true, genuine fellowship look like, <laughs> I beseech thee therefore, brethren, that's Bible, to attend a tailgate. Y'all, when I walked out to the NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas, I was thoroughly impressed. When I walked out there, they had patio furniture, dinette sets, living room furniture, <laughs> den furniture, flat screen TVs, jacuzzis, riding mechanical bulls. What I noticed, everybody out there was operating in their fit. Everybody out there was doing what they do well with no judgment, no criticism, and no condemnation. I mean, all ethnicities out there. Over here, you had the Asian community. And the Asians over here with they shrimp fried rice. They sushi, they sake, they egg rolls, they fortune cookie. And they were just giving it to anybody that wanted it. Well, nobody out there saying, that ain't how you roll egg rolls. We don't fry rice like, well, none of that going on. Over here was the Hispanic community, and they had their nachos, their tacos, their burritos, their chimichangas, their margaritas, their coronas. <laughs> Period. And they were just sharing it with anybody that wanted it. I walked by there like, Marcos, you want one? I was like, nah, I don't drink. <laughs> but let me taste it. <laughs> I mean, oh, taste and see. That's, that's Bible. Over here, you had the white community, and they had their sandwiches, and they cheese, and they wines, and they crackers, and they hummus, and they couscous, and they trail mix. And they were just giving it to everybody that wanted it. But then over here, you had my people, black people, fried chicken, fried fish, fried shrimp, pork chops, turkey legs, Barbecue, gumbo, boudin, Hennessy, Tangeray, Cavazier, Jack Daniel, Ciroc, Bacardi, Armandale, Christian Brothers, Jim Bean, Miller Light, Coors Light, Bud Light, all the lights. I mean the Israelites. I mean everybody. It was lit. It was lit. I look at my watch. I say, man, it's time for the game to start. My boy looks at me and says, shoo, we good out here. I say, what? He said, here go the tickets. If you want to go, go on, go. But we good out here. I said, so let me get this straight. We at the game, but we not going in the game. Y'all, what I learned was that the fellowship outside was so fitting that folk didn't even want to go inside. And in today's time, we're dealing with a whole new generation. And they don't care how sweet your church is. They just may not come in. And so what we got to do is take all the good teachers and preachings we've learned inside, outside. Got to take them outside. It's a new day. I said, you got to take them outside because folk ain't coming to church like they used to. Man, when I was growing up, church was mandatory. You had to go regardless of condition. You had to go. Church was the only thing open when I was coming. There wasn't nothing else open on Sundays. Nothing but church and lubies. nothing open on Sundays. Church was mandatory back in the day, but now church is optional. Yeah, it's optional. Yeah, I mean when folk wouldn't dare put stuff on a Sunday. Now they put everything on Sunday. When is Lee Lee baby shower? <laughs> Sunday. When's Junior birthday party? It's Sunday. 
right? So as I kept doing it, y'all, I looked up and I noticed, man, there's some churches out here that are still packed. Yeah. When I pass by in my car, parking lot full of cars. When I go in, the building full of people. It's just that we don't identify them as churches. But they are churches. It's new churches out here now. Churches like Costco. <laughs> Look at y'all. I'm a member. I see you. <laughs> churches like Sam's, Walmart, Target, Starbucks, Chick fil A. Oh, man, every time I say that, people always share with me, as if I don't know, that Chick-fil-A is not open on Sunday. I'm just surprised that you think church is only on Sunday. I know Chick-fil-A ain't open. But let me show you. It's something I believe our churches can learn from these new churches. Because they churches really won't believe it or not. They churches. Folk congregate there a lot. Let me put them together. Take Sam's and Costco. Y'all know what I love about Sam's and Costco? I love Sam's and Costco is that um, when I walk in, they let me be me. Watch this. I'm already a member. I got the membership card. <laughs> when I walk in, ain't nobody in there telling me, hey man, tie your shoes. Hey, man, take your hat off. Hey, man, pull your pants up. Now, don't get me wrong. Rules matter. I'm a fan of rules, and we need rules. But sometimes we got to look at some of these rules. I'm still struggling with the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I ain't got them rules down yet. And you're going to put some rules on top of rules I ain't got down yet? Now, look, I was at a church one day in there praise and worship. Me and this lady, it's one of them new churches, you know where it's dark in there. They got smoke and lasers and everything. <laughs> and we in there just singing, our God, you know, is an awesome God. He's right, we doing our thing, right? All of a sudden, I look over the lady, she done sat down. Her arms fold, lips twist. It wasn't even offering. She just. <laughs> I said, ma'am, are you okay? She said, no. I said, what's the problem? She said, man, in the back, got a hat on. Y'all, I turned her, it's dark. I turned around, I'm. <laughs> but I had to think about it. If a hat knocks you out of worship, is it really the hat? <laughs> what I like about Sam's and Costco is they got these sample stations. <laughs> what that means is they allow you to sample stuff with no pressure to buy it. They let you sample it. You, mm, I like that. And I just think before you put me in a year-long new members orientation. <laughs> can I sample first? Let me sample the ministry. What's wrong with that? Let me sample it. You know, I tell this story about how my dad, man, my dad, listen. When my dad used to preach, man, my dad would preach. He preached a good hour. And when he finished, he put his trench coat on and his hat, and he opened the doors of church. And when he opened the doors of the church, my dad, he'd sit there. He'd let you know, hey, I want you to join, you know, blah, blah, blah. He'd go with his spiel. Nobody would come. And my dad would be like, oh, no, I didn't study all week. <laughs> For nobody to come down here. No, somebody joining this Sunday. So what my daddy would do, he'll kick that appeal to a whole nother gear. Then my daddy, he'll say, listen, listen, uh, so everybody in here saved. So everybody in here know that um, if you were to leave here today <laughs> and you drive home, and as soon as you put the key in your door and open it, a mean man is in there with a 12-gauge shotgun. I used to be like, a uh, 12? He can't have a little gun. I mean, he got a. He's saying to man, blow your head off. Do you know heaven will be your eternal home? 
I would see men. Men weren't thinking about joining church. Now here they come. I like, my daddy got them. And when they would join church, man, my daddy would offer them, you know, give them the rights and all the privileges with the right hand of fellowship, all the rights of the church. And then all of a sudden he was like, you know what? We need a good man like you in the parking lot. <laughs> the man just joined today. He don't even know him. I can look at the man's face. I don't want to work outside. I work outside all week. He'll just see a man, hey, we need a good brother like you in the sound. Because back in the day, hey, just wherever we need you, just get there. That boy say he'll put you, he'll put a man in the sound. Man, he not an engineer. He's not interested in sound. And he in there. And then my dad would get up and preach. And then mess over him. Hey, man, turn me up in the monitors. The man back there. I ain't lying about that. Hey, man, turn me up. Man, get mad. Just put them all up. Just, ah. He just leave. We never see him again. Let folks sample. Let me take Walmart, Walmart and Target. Y'all, anywhere you can buy a lawnmower and a loaf of bread <laughs> under the same roof. That should be a sin. It don't even go together. But instead, it's sensational. Because Walmart and Target understand I need to become all things to all people. I dare you go to Walmart and Target looking for something that ain't on them shelves. Go tell the manager. When you return, it's going to be there. Because their whole mantra is you don't have to drive all over Houston. Whatever you're looking for, we got it right here. Do y'all know Walmart sell caskets? Walmart sell caskets. They killing them out here. You hear me? <laughs> Walmart sell caskets. And they relatively cheap. Because they roll the prices back. <laughs> they roll the prices back. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You got folk who come to churches and they be in need. You know, they do. I'm talking about some of them legit ones too. They be in need. You know, and when they come to the church, you know, let's say they need like a job. You know. And the thing about it, in the pews, it's people with jobs. Managers and supervisors. But they never know. Because we don't talk. I read this book. I'm going to paraphrase it. It's like church folk. It said, church folk kind of, I don't want to say dumb, but church folk kind of, um, for, lack of, for lack of a word, dumb. Uh, they say, because what we do is we drive to church same way. Park, same parking spot. Sit, same seat. Talk, same people. And pray for something different. You won't even do something different, but you're praying for something different. When I read that book, I said, oh, man, I went to church. I sat up there in the baptismal pool. <laughs> Pastor, what you doing up there? Something different. Just keep going, preach. <laughs> Trying to shake some stuff up. Let me go to Starbucks. Y'all go to Starbucks. When I go to Starbucks, y'all, I don't drink coffee. I don't drink tea. I don't eat the pastries. I go to Starbucks because I am there to fellowship. I am now to rub elbows um, with the movers and the shakers. In Starbucks, it's always a white boy with glasses and a laptop. It's always a black boy with dreads, seashell in the dreads, uh, <laughs> smelling like oils uh, with a laptop. God has given these people vision. I go in there to just try to, you know, kind of keep up, you know, try to learn the lingo. What I love about Starbucks, at least the one I go to, they never say, hey, you in the back. The one that ain't buying nothing. 
I'm back there using their free Wi-Fi. I'm just sitting there. They never say, hey, you get out of here. They never kick me out because Starbucks understand if I keep coming, if I keep coming, if they don't run me away and I keep coming, eventually I'm going to get in that line and say, yeah, let me get a latte, mocha, supercalifragilistic. Last but not least, Chick-fil-A. Y'all, it was storming in Houston one day, raining terribly bad. I'm on my way home. I'm at the red light, and I look to my right, and I see the Chick-fil-A drive through line wrapped completely around the strip center. I said, oh, my God, the chicken ain't that good. <laughs> First thing I noticed is that Chick-fil-A members go to church in bad weather. I ain't never seen a good church weather for us. We use weather to determine if we go in the church. Come on, you know you wake up on Sunday, look out there. Ooh, it's raining out there. It's too wet to go to church today. If it's cold, ooh, it's chilly out there. It's too cold to go to church today. It could be a lovely day, a perfect day. We'll look out there and go, ooh, it's too beautiful of a day. <laughs> we could do something else. So these folk here, they in line. So what I do, I get in line because I'm a member. <laughs> and when I got in the line, y'all, as I'm approaching the little order win uh, menu window, I see a little black girl outside with an umbrella and an iPad taking orders. I got mad. I'm about to call Black Lives Matter. Why she out here? Why they got the black girl out here? No real talk. Why, they, why she out here? Out of everybody in there. Don't make no sense. So when I get up to her, she says, hi, welcome to Chick-fil-A. How may I serve you? I say, why are you out here? She was, what? I said, you out here? Look at your edges. They already falling. You can get sick. She was like, calm down, calm down. Welcome to Chick-fil-A. How may I serve you? I was like, you know, give me the nuggets, you know, fries. I got my regular. When I finished ordering, the little girl says, it was my pleasure to serve you. I didn't receive it. I go to the next window, get my food, drive off. Then it hit me. Why am I mad that this girl got a good attitude in a storm? Why am I mad? But you know why I was mad? Because I know what church folk look like when they in a storm. Oh, the church folk I know is written all over your face. You don't got to say a word. So this was something that was new to me. What those churches have in common, though, is that they have a no-judgment zone. Watch this. They have a no-judgment zone. When they say come as you are, they mean it. A lot of times when our churches say come as you are, either we don't mean it or we don't think they coming. You know, the whosoever wills. Yeah, we don't think they coming. We just kind of said, let whosoever will, let them come. But then when they come, oh, my God. Who is that? I don't want to point, but security. <laughs> but you can see that same person in Costco and not afraid. So here it is, y'all. I, uh, I, I looked at this whole shebang, and I was like, okay, okay. Because one of the big things in my barbershop was they were saying, we judge. That's what they say at the barbershop. Mark, y'all judge too much. That's why I don't go. Other, other people in the shop start chiming in. I don't go because y'all do too much judging at that church. So I had to ask myself, do I judge? It was a tough question. I said, do I judge? Because, you know, I think I'm pretty, you know, cool. You see my swag. 
And I was like, do I judge? And when I got to the answer, I said, you know what? I don't judge, but boy, do I referee. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is going to bless you if you let it. Uh, man, I ref. We don't be judging, but we ref. See, a ref is somebody who makes judgment calls. And what happens when you in church and you trying to live right, you trying to do all the right things, and then you see other folk, live in any kind of way and look like the Lord just keep blessing them. Woo! The only thing we have over them is a little judgment. That's why when they even tell us about their blessing, girl, you know Cheryl and them got a new house. Yeah, but they shacking up. <laughs> you know, that's what we do. We got to kill it because you know it's like, ugh. What's it? Because you trying to live right. So it's hard for you not to blow that whistle. You got to call it on. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, ma'am. That's fornication. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You lied on them taxes. Yeah, yeah. My son, he play AAU basketball, right? My son, he... Um, pretty good too you know uh, he get it from his dad <laughs> and uh, my son he play AU ball and what I do I go to his tournaments on the weekend and when I went to the tournament I began to uh, do a didactic ophthalmology study on the refs <laughs> I don't know what that mean I heard a pastor say that I'm like oh that sound good insert that right there but I did research on the refs and out of all of my studies what I found out is nobody like them nobody like the referee nobody like y'all I mean the refs watch this y'all when I go to the game the refs walk in they even did the game yet folk already booing as soon as they walk in boo Ref got on glasses. Oh, he can't see. Boo. Ref heavy said, oh, he out of shape. Boo. Nobody liked the refs. However, every now and then, it's a good ref at the game. It'd be a good one. Every now and then, it'd be a good one there. A good ref. A good ref is one that understands that my son, them only 12. And if I blow the whistle every time they in violation, I'm going to discourage them. In church terms, what I'm saying is they only babes in Christ. And if you got something to say every time, you're going to run them off. I know so what some of y'all saying. You saying so, Marcus. Should we allow them to continue in sin? and not say nothing? Should we let them just wallow in wickedness? Yeah. No, 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 I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. No, I'm not saying that, but I am saying if the only time you say something to them is when they in a violation, you out of line. Because one thing about and what he said at that barbershop to me, he said, Marcus, when I got out of prison, I was trying to get a job with nobody hire me, with nobody give me an opportunity. And then my mama kept telling me, baby, you need to get in church. So I finally, I went to church. And when I got to church, they was looking at me funny. And I don't know if y'all know anything about sports, but that's a tough game. When you got to play the opponent and the refs. It's a tough game. It's real tough. So I done learned in my little old journey, you know, let my light shine. I remember my daddy's church they had a little old song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, but they ain't go nowhere. <laughs> and that's the problem we have in the day. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere. Come on, man. We love being light up in here. All kind of lights in here. Flashlight, floodlight, candlelight, cell phone lights. We just light each other up. And then don't want to go out. I've been out. 
And I had to, I had to, I had to look back at my life and say, man, you know, you've been light for a while. Like, I don't invite folk to church. I try to impress them to church. Yeah, I am impre impress them with how I live, though. Back in the day, my dad would hit me with, hey, man, stay holy. That was his word. Hey, stay holy. I'd be like, what? Stay holy. He didn't tell me what it means. He just said, stay holy. <laughs> that was the whole thing. Man, stay holy. I'd be like, hey, man, I'm about to go to this party. Hey, stay holy. At the party? Good luck. <laughs> and it worked for the most part through high school. But then I got to college. I went to Texas Southern University. Yeah, TSU, HBCU. 16 females to every one male. When I got there, the Lord removed the scales off my eyes. I said, oh, so that's what they've been keeping me from. I've literally stepped into a land flowing with milk. And honeys. And when I got to college, I ain't gonna lie, I got there, I was having a good time, but we had sweets, right? You had a roommate and, and you had sweet mates, right? So it was like four or five of us in one little old suite. And uh, when I got there, you know, everybody in my suite smoked weed. Everybody smoked weed. I'm talking about light, come back. I'm talking about light, come back. I saw some of your eyes go. No, come back, I'm talking about light. <laughs> I, watch this here, I ain't never smoked weed. I've never smoked weed. Always wanted to, if I could be honest. I've always wanted to. I've never done it. Never done it. Always wanted to. I couldn't get over a few things about weed. Uh, first thing I couldn't get over about weed was that uh, I really don't know the weed man. I know you think you do. Uh, <laughs> but who is he? I mean, I don't know him, no. He ain't growing the weed. I mean... I, I couldn't get over that. I know my weed man. No, you don't. Because, uh, you know, I, I don't understand how folk, you won't eat everybody potato salad, but you'll smoke everybody weed. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Second reason why I ain't smoke was because I couldn't get over the fact that everybody lips. <laughs> like all y'all, like everybody in here. So you're going to put your lips on it. Then you're going to put your lips on it. You my roommate. You ain't bathed all semester. <laughs> and you're going to put your lips on it. Uh, nah, I pass. I'm pass. Last reason why I smoke weed, because it seemed like my, my guys that smoked, it seemed like they needed it for something. They needed it to be cool. They needed it to be live, to mellow out, to have courage, to talk to girls, to have a good time. And God had already blessed me in these areas. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so beware of doing stuff you ain't got to do. Yeah, I ain't have to do it, so I never did it, never did it, right? So because I did not smoke weed, what my boys did, they made me the designated driver. I didn't sign up for this. Ain't no application for designated driver. I don't even have a car. But these boys saw something in me. I don't know if it's leadership skills. I don't know if it's swag. I don't know if it's light. I don't know if it's sober-mindedness. But whatever they saw in me, they thought it was okay for them to put their lives in my hand. Now, just because I ain't smoked weed didn't mean I was better than them. I know better, but I ain't better. I'm going to the same party they going to. Matter of fact, I'm driving. <laughs> and just because I ain't smoke weed did not mean that um, I was removed from ridicule. Them boys still came at me. <laughs> smoke that Wiley. <laughs> He's scared. That boy daddy will kill him. I mean, all that. This every day, every day. They smoke weed every day. This every day. So the pressure started getting to me. And I remember, I was in eight o'clock English. I was there and I thought about this thing. It was on my mind. I said, you know what? I'm smoking today. 
I said, yeah, I'm smoking today. Yeah, I prayed about it and everything. I said today. Yeah, the Bible say pray about everything. I said, I'm, I, I'm smoking today. So we get out of class. I get back to the dorm. And when I get in there, y'all, we used to play this little gaming device called Sega. That's what we played back in the day, Sega. We played Madden on Sega. And y'all, we up in that joint. And just like clockwork, them boys fired it up. Now, back in my day, they were called blunts. Are y'all okay? Okay. <laughs> they were called blunts or sweets. And so they, they fired it up. <sighs> my roommate, Mooch, he hit that thing. <sighs> he passed it to my boy, Keelan. Keelan get it. Keelan was like a weedologist. He went to school for this. <laughs> huh? You should see how he, he was a technician, how he put it in there, roll it, fire the thing up, smoke it, and gargle the smoke. He... <laughs> and I used to sit back and go, Ooh! <laughs> teach me. He passed it to Dre. Dre ain't hit it yet, already coughing. <laughs> Dre normally pass it to me. I would pass it to Smither. I'm playing the game, but today my day. So when that blunt came my way, I... And right before I put that thing in my mouth, my roommate said, hey, what you doing? You real stupid right now. Why you trying to do what we do? Don't do us. Do you and pass the blunt. <laughs> and it was that day I learned being holy did not mean being separate. Being holy meant being set apart. And a lot of times when we get all saved and sanctified and filled, <laughs> we separate. And these folk that you used to be with, they need you to still kind of be with them, but different. Yeah. Be the light. When you got that light in you, man, folk already know. You can act like you don't. I don't care how you try to dress it up, you know, how you try to do whatever. They already know. When I got to college, I hung around these boys. They always used to fight. I'd be like, man, who we about to whoop? They look at me, boy, I'm going to take your little usher boy self back to the dog. They already knew it. It's not me. It ain't me. It ain't me. They already know. My first job, my first job out of college, I worked at Black Entertainment Television, BET. This is my first good job. And uh, I, I was in, living in D.C. And up in D.C., uh, every Tuesday, every Tuesday, um, my coworkers wanted to go eat lunch at a strip club. Are y'all okay? So I'm talking about right here. Church folk, like they don't even know. A strip club, what is that? A place where they strip. <laughs> Stuff's still going on just because you in here. <laughs> oh, they get tight on you. <laughs> Loose enough. Every Tuesday, they want to go eat lunch at strip club. Every Tuesday. They would always invite me, Mark, come with us. I'd be like, nah, that ain't me. I'm good. Man, come on, man, we're just going to eat lunch. I said, oh, yeah, but man, nah, that, that ain't me. Man, I'm telling you, they got the best food in the world. And that didn't make sense to me. I said, they got the best food? I'm trying to see who graduated from culinary school and said, you know where I really want to work.
Y'all, I was going to church in D.C. I'm always going to church. I got to go. I'm in church in D.C. I would invite them to stuff at our church in D.C. They would come. They would invite me to strip club. I ain't going. Finally, one day I just said, man, forget it. I'm going. Because I knew if I go, I could say I went, I'm done. I go to the strip club Tuesday, eat lunch with my coworkers. And I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Best chicken wings I've ever had in my life. The best chicken wings I've ever had. I don't know what type of season they put on this chicken. I don't know if it's cinnamon, if it's ginger, if it's paprika. Whatever it is, it's good. But here's the thing. Hey, I'm talking about being a light. Stay with me. I'm talking about being a light. Here's the thing, though. After I finished eating, one of the workers came up to me. And she was like, uh, this ain't you, huh? I said, what? She said, this, being here. This ain't you. I was like, nah. She said, I could tell. You don't even look right in here. <laughs> she said, it's something different about you anyway. I mean, why are you here? I said, well, my coworkers, they invited me here. They said, y'all had some good food, and the wings are good. I'm not going to lie. She said, yeah, but I can just tell you ain't, you ain't, you ain't supposed to be in here. She said, so, um. Do you want to dance? I said, nah, I'm good. I'm just here to eat the lunch. She said, well, your co-workers already paid for you a dance. I said, well, you got to work. I mean, <laughs> the Bible says if you don't work. But my point is, <laughs> she knew I was different. The light. Let your light shine is what I'm saying with you. Yeah. You got to go out, man. You, you, you got to go. I, I don't let folk now kind of like dictate um, where I go and what I do. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to tell you just go to any, anywhere. But what I am saying is, you know, go places. Remember one day I, after a show, me and my manager, we went to this restaurant. We was trying to catch the Rockets. Rockets were in the playoff. And we shot there to the restaurant, and a lady sitting on the other side of the bar, because that's where the TV's at. <laughs> the TV's there. So we go up to the bar. And I was just sitting there, and uh, I look over, and the lady was just looking at me like this. And I say, ma'am, is, is there a problem? She said, it is. I said, well, what's the problem? She was like, hmm, I know who you are, and it's people like you. There's a reason why other people don't go to church. And I say, ma'am, what did I do? She said, yeah, you all on that gospel show, and you in here sitting at the bar. I say, ma'am, um, I'm here to watch the game. And furthermore, I'm not the reason why people don't go to church. People don't go to church because they don't want to. <laughs> and then I had to tell her, hey, I mean, I, I didn't die on that crowd. That, that crowd's too big for me. It don't even fit me. I, I'm a farted too long. <laughs> I didn't shed any blood. I'm anemic. You can't even, you can't even receive my blood. How all of a sudden, I'm the reason. Yeah. And then I had to order a drink because she had ran my blood pressure. I wasn't even had a drink. I would have had to watch the TV. I watched the Rockets. I had to give me a drink. Here it is. Let me close. The last thing they said at the shop, man, they didn't understand our, you know, they didn't understand church language, you know, because we have a language, you know, that we, that we understand, those of us that's in church. Uh, they said they didn't understand 
you know, the language. They didn't understand some of the things. So I, I be, when I'm at the barbershop, I, I, I be explaining stuff. Because, you know, when you're the Christian and you're the light, you the face of this. You the face of it. Wherever you go, you the face. Everybody look at you. They looking at you, you know, especially if you done said, hey, man, I'm in church. This is what I do. So now they looking for answers from you, light, right? And so um, I'm up in that joint, and they said, man, I don't like, you know, this Holy Spirit, this Holy Ghost, folk running around and falling out and everything. And watch this here. I had to tell them I didn't either. They would. I said, yeah, man. I said, I don't hear it. Because y'all, I ain't never wanted the Holy Ghost. Stay with me. I ain't never wanted it. I was cool with the Father. <laughs> me and the Son, straight. But I ain't never want that Holy Ghost. Because when I was growing up, how I saw the Holy Ghost, it really wasn't attractive to me. I'm just talking about to me. It wasn't attractive to me. Uh, you know, when I got old, I read how the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Holy Spirit is meek. And, and you know, it, 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 it even have a mascot. That's the dove. <laughs> Holy Ghost got a mascot. Come on, man. You got to get this. Uh, so the whole thing, watch this here. It wasn't attractive to me. And I remember as a kid, when my, you know, being my dad's church, and I'd be sitting next to my mama, you know, and we had a dude there who played the um, organ. His name was Ellis. Played the organ for the senior choir every fourth Sunday. <laughs> Since back in the day, we had different choirs sang every Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's because people went to church. Uh, Ellis played for the senior choir every fourth Sunday. And Ellis caught the Holy Spirit every fourth Sunday. Not on the first Sunday. Surely not on the second Sunday. Not on the third Sunday. And not on the fifth Sunday when we had it. Just on the fourth Sunday. Ellis played for the senior choir. And he'd be on that organ. And that thing would hit him. And he would just, ah! And he would get off that organ and start running around that church. And I remember looking at my mama, Mama, what's wrong with Ellis? And my mama, whole answer, he caught the Holy Spirit. And I would think as a child, if that's the Holy Spirit, I don't want it. We had a drummer at our church named Delores. Lois would be playing them drums. This before they had a cage. This before, this before, this before drummers had a one bedroom. This is when the drums was right in front of the congregation and the church mother right there with her ears like this. <laughs> Lois be playing them drums. Man, that thing could hit Lois. Sticks, cymbals, everything just. In the congregation, she just kicking, just bam, bam, just. Lois, take off, run, and sometimes run all the way to the back of the church, hit the wall, boom. I say, Mama, what's wrong with Lois? My mama just say, who? She called the Holy Spirit. And I would think, if that's the Holy Spirit, I don't want it. Then I was at my pawpaw church. Y'all, my pawpaw is a fire and brimstone pastor. That means he preaches with no love. His whole sermon every week, you're going to hell. Keep living the way you're living. Hell is in your future. I would try to tell him, pawpaw, have you read past Malachi? It's a dude named Jesus. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head. 
He talks about grace and mercy. My papa, I'm in Leviticus. You're going to hell. Keep living the way you live. I'm at his church. And at his church, what they would do at the end of service is make a big circle, hold hands, and tarry for the Holy Spirit. That's what they would do. They would tarry for the Holy Spirit. And I remember being in line, in a circle rather, and I'm holding hands. And this particular Sunday, my stomach was <laughs> belligerent. It was, it was upset. It was mad. And I was like, Bruh. So I break the circle. I put the people's hands together, you know. And I go to the restroom. And I'm in the restroom, y'all, and I'm, I'm kind of spitting up a little bit. And my grandmother come in there. Mark, are you okay? I said, Granny, my stomach was a little upset, but I had to throw up. My grandmother, <gasps> that's the Holy Spirit. I said, about to make me throw up? Well, if that's the Holy Spirit. Hey, man, I'm Marcus D. Wiley. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for coming out here tonight. Yeah. So what's up? What you think, New Faith? Did you enjoy bathtubs and Bibles? Well, come on, let me get them clap emojis. Type something in the comment section. I'm trying to return back to the church when everybody in here. So I need them accolades, amen? But listen, thank you all so much. I appreciate it to the New Faith Church, to the staff for allowing me to be a part of Summer Shift 2020. Now, it's not over. Tomorrow, Saturday. It's going to be a night of praise and worship. And we want you to come right back, same platform, same time, and get your praise and worship on. Amen. Thank you so much. I'll see y'all next time.